Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. Yes, yes sir. We have two chains. Yeah. And the true can. What's up, fellas? Good. What's happening? Good. Good. That's going on first. Let me uh, say thank you to two chains. Thank you. I, I did a car show this year, and I needed his car, and he sent it. No problems. No question asked. So yeah. I just want to say thank you. I know a lot of times Why people you don't say thank you. Like he got one car. Well, he, sent, he sent one. He sent one. I car thought you I messed needed. it up. Well, you got. I didn't mess it up. It was okay. just a heavy ass car. But yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm he sent that that's car. That's dope. I'm from Atlanta to send it up here. That's that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, that that was pretty dope. So I wanted yeah. to say thank you. Now let's talk about this. Uh, <laughs> true care. Let everybody introduce themselves, man. I is world. Man, hot lot then South Side, Atlanta, Georgia, man. Gabby Rose, all that. Hey, man. You got Sleepy Row, man. And Schoolie, West Side Zone. Now, Chains, now how did you get this camp together? What made you decide to put this group together and put some young some young guys on? I felt like I've done everything else in the, um, in the business, you know. Um, I'm in this point of my career where, you know, I still enjoy doing music, but it's definitely time for me to put somebody on. It's definitely time for me to uh, add quality of life to what I got going on. So I figured the best thing to do is not only do a label, but to put somebody on, somebody young, somebody with a, um, a newer perspective, a new sound. And so that's what I'm trying to do with my boys right here. I got the label deal with Atlantic Records last year. So mm -hmm. after rapper go to the league, I started locking in and really trying to find some talent to complement what I was doing and what I like to do. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like an artist can reach icon, icon status until they put other people on. You know? I agree. You feel the same way? Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm working on that with being an entrepreneur, owning businesses outside of a... Uh, Outside of music, um, everything from G Leagues to the G League team to the um, to, to lounges, I felt like it was just time to add this to my portfolio. And also, this is my way of um, get, giving back. You know, none of these guys are a part of no uh, charitable contribution, but just giving back to the to the neighborhood, giving back to the whole process of trying to change young black men's life. So with Schooley, he's a you know he's been a superstar in Atlanta. For over 10 years now, he's only 25 years old. He's in his group, Rich Kids, super legendary, super been a fan of him since I, I've been doing music. Mm -hmm. He's probably been doing music longer than me, actually, you know what I'm saying? Just a straight superstar as soon as he walk in the room. And then I got World, who's down here on this end, from one of my um, homeboys in the streets. We were just watching YouTube one day, and he showed me this clip of World walking through his, his apartment complex, basically saying that... Um, he was more of a community activist, and he had this uh, agenda called um, No Child Left Behind, which I just, I felt like was just a whole different movement for a rapper or mm -hmm. artist. And then with the two guys you see um, on each side of me, they're from the south side of Atlanta, College Park, where I'm from. This is Sleepy Rose and Hot. And what happened with them was my, um, one of my right-hand man, Big, grew up with me on the south side. His son got... Um, kill unfortunately to some gun violence you know mm -hmm. at 17 years old so his son is actually sleepy rose's best friend and hot's cousin mm -hmm. so i gave big a job as an a r to kind of help him cope with what he's dealing with and uh he brought me these two acts and we've been rocking ever since i think i read somewhere where you grew up with hot's father and uncle too right yeah i know hot whole family mm -hmm. hot only 20 years old i knew him before he got here I like to watch your videos that you guys post online because it feel very energetic. Like to have the young guys around you. Y'all, y'all don't look so turned up right now. Man, but when I, I see y'all on Instagram, like that, like, they, I'm telling you, they rappers. <laughs> they officially <laughs> rappers now. What y'all was that last name? What they call Tito's. That sounds like a vodka. <laughs> not what we y'all drinking. Tito's. <laughs> Tito's. <laughs> Tito's. <laughs> he don't know what it's going. Them, boy, uh, them boys blurry right now. I, I thought yeah. Tito's was a liquor, but all right. Yeah, I'm know. still hearing stories about last night, so you know. <laughs> you didn't go with them. I left. <laughs> oh, that's I can't stay, do stay. it. Yeah, it's probably good that I left, though. You know what I'm saying? But I, I encourage them to to enjoy their life, live the, live the life. You know, I'm trying to like lead by example. I don't want to be the little chaperone, preachy, preachy. You know what I mean? Right, you got to right. let them make some mistakes. Like, when I used to take Sleepy out, at first he used to go in other people's section. I had to explain to him, like, you can't <laughs> just... He'll find the yeah, highest... Walking. He's already my <laughs> height. He'll find a, somewhere else to be the tallest... Tallest and but it might not be in our section, and I'd be like, you know, they they pay for that right there. So you know, you wasn't the bottle taker, wasn't you? Whether you didn't go walk up to somebody else's table yeah, and take nah, that bottle, I'd bring a bottle for No, yeah, they care, don't man. even care about drinking, like yeah. they just like trying to just move and be seen, like they're not shy at all, you know what I'm saying? And it's important yeah. to be around me to be able to like <laughs> be your own individual, mm -hmm. like 
as far as sitting under me, that really, that really, I have to tell them, like, let's, you know, let's get a little title, you know, take some fleets, because these guys are getting the club, they're spread out. You know what I'm saying? Spread <laughs> their wings. And we Come to the bowling party. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's the vibe I like around me. So it do it do give me that um that feeling. Angela, you know, I be need I be I be needing the young ones around. I usually travel with just seven employees, you know what I'm saying? Road manager, DJ, mm -hmm. photographer, but now we kinda moving as one. You kinda gotta be the chaperone though, right? Cause you don't want them to make mistakes if you can prevent it. No, if I can prevent it, but <laughs> how is she gonna learn, you know? Mm -hmm. So we all we all learn, you know. I, I still, you know, I still learn, but at the same time, like man, if I became like preachy preacher, then I wouldn't be realistic to the fact of me being 21 before mm -hmm. I wasn't in the music game at 21. I was a little bit, you know, a little bit off of my path. But what were you doing? Too? We know what he was doing. <laughs> you want to tell him himself? <laughs> Goodness gracious! What's wrong with him? Charlemagne. Yeah. <laughs> Now, as a collaborative effort, pu effort putting out this project, right? You guys have no face, no case. Mm. How do you decide who gets on what song, what songs make the project? Because I'm sure y'all recorded a lot. We just get our 100%. Everybody go crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's usually like friendly competition when we're in the studio. Um, you got to go hard, like on some this change on the song. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll, I don't know. He ain't never said, yo. Your verse whack, but I, it probably ain't been that situation yet. But like, have you said that so he far? Might, he he might. He might. Told me before my shit. Who told you? That shit. Like that shoot it out, us man. For shoot out hard though. The verse ass man. You gotta go redo that shit. Yeah, hard. Only because the record's so hard. Like everybody came on. Yeah, shoot out hard. hard. I don't know what he talking about. Shoot out hard. It's very hard. So what? So when he tell you your shit ass, what's your first your first reaction? I be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> Anything he say about me, I'm gonna be pissed off. I don't give a damn. He tell me, man, bro, you shoot your ring outside. I'm pissed off. Like, I don't even want to hear it. All right, you feel me? So when they told me that shit, I was mad as hell. But I just went in there and redid that motherfucker. Mm. Now y'all tell me this shit ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that motherfucker was hard. Yeah. Drop, let's go. It ended up being the intro of the album. So, I mean, that's yeah. probably why. When you hear, I mean, you've been doing it long enough, too. When yeah. you hear something, you know, like, man, this is what you want And that's one. what I'm trying to tell this little nigga right here. I've been doing this long <laughs> enough to let him, you know what I'm saying? And you can't be in your feelings on constructive criticism. But did you, know you tell him his ass, saying? or do you be like, do that again? No, you, you have, have you have to tell somebody else you, to tell me his ass. No, you got to tell see. him he, his <laughs> ass. He needs the most <laughs> abrupt, <laughs> abrasive <laughs> way, because uh, he has, like, you don't understand, man. I, my wife had to tell me, like, you taking these, you taking folks from the streets and putting them on TV like I had to figure that out because like I ain't understand at first you know what I'm saying like these boys are fresh mm -hmm. not out of jail and them but just fresh off the block you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying so stuff comes with that you know what I mean and 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 I accept that, you know what I'm saying? I accept all all of that, that and everything that comes with it. But that's the best energy, though. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to like changing. Like, so I'm in it. Like, I love doing rap. I run circles around, you know, what I'm saying rappers. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I do. I'm always do that. But and I love being creative and all that. So this is just another way for me to do that. We're bringing in new people and just kind of like, like just showing them different ways mm -hmm. and just being able to get up. Happy as hell knowing that you finna do something you love and get paid off of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's pain that you've been going through, you're able to profit off your pain. And so I'm just trying to show them how to do that without like telling them, stop, don't go it up, don't drunk too high, don't like, man, I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? They got their own van, they smoking it out, they doing what they want to do, they moving around New York. That's what I want to see. How do y'all pick records though? Like I, I fuck with the pop off the schoolie joint. How do y'all pick records? Like, do they go in there and record by themselves and y'all just, or y'all do it all together? Yeah, well, it's you're hard going. to record, man. I might record probably like ten songs in one day. Like, no bullshit. So you got to go through that and pick the record. Tech might don't like none of the records. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So yeah. I got I got to try again a whole nother day. Boy. Yeah. You feel me? So it's hard to pick them records. The bar is set high over here. We definitely over record for everything. Shout out to um Dallas. We went to L. A. for a couple of weeks and locked down in the studio. And that was our first time all being in the studio at the same time. We're having multiple rooms. So not only were we able to sit in the same room and work together, we were able to split up, go in individual rooms, catch a vibe, hear each other music, but it was all competitive. Like, you know, when this dude in the other room, he cooking, and we just getting all in the same room and listening to stuff for the first time. And that started giving us that feeling of like, man, we really got something going on. So what's the plan mm -hmm. as far as release? Of course, you got this album with everybody on it now. Mm -hmm. Now as a, a label exec, now who's next to go? How do you decide who's next? Well, it's basically, you know, it's 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 data. <laughs> it's data nowadays. Honestly, it's, it's like you see it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. with this project and what I told them, like 
I don't, I don't expect for it to just be as big as my individual efforts or nothing like that because I'm trying to put new people on and mm-hmm. I want them to think like other people. When y'all see new people on the, the initial thing is I I'm a hater. I don't I, you gotta I gotta buy into what you're doing. So that's what they're doing now, trying to buy into the guys. But I do know that this project will be used for discovery. Like this is where people they'll hear a song and be like, you know, who is world, who is schooly, who is sleep or whatever. So that's what it's more or less used for. But based off what we drop. It's more like a data thing, the rea- the reactions that we get from from the consumers and everybody that's just listening. Right. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, you you got shot in the neck last year. Or 2018? I got shot in the back, it came out my neck though. Damn, did, did you feel obligated to put him on after that? I, mean, I, don't, I wasn't even around, like, around, like rapping and shit around that time. I was just in the streets around that time. Yeah. I wasn't even stunned rapping or none of that shit. Like rapping wasn't even on my head, for real. But you knew him too, because you, because yeah, so I, I did I, like I said, I know his, uh, and just I know his, some of his family and everything, and I, I know his cousin, and so, um, his, his older cousin Big, who was my A and R, you know, what I'm saying after his son got killed, it was so close to home that I had to start paying attention to the young guy, especially from my neighborhood, because I felt like, man, I'm for me to be in this position and not give him an opportunity, I just felt like I wasn't doing no justice or whatever, so. Big, I, that was Big's job was to bring in talent for him. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so soon as Hot started getting himself back together, because he was in the hospital for I think maybe thirty. I was in the hospital a whole month. I ain't eat, talk, walk, no nothing. Like, mm-hmm. man, I was getting some milk shit through my nose and my stomach. I ain't moved, Damn. talk. I couldn't do shit. I was just sitting there laying there. Yeah, so when, the, when did you start? When did you start writing? When did you get? In, was you into rap at that time, or you got? That when rap I started after? trying to rap. When I was in the hospital, like the whole really? time I was in the hospital, like that what made me want to rap. I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I you ain't started listening to Little Baby, right? Yeah, it was Little Baby. Yeah, yeah, hard, boy. Way to the top. That way to the top. That what got me through that. I would listen to Little Baby. And I was just like, man, if I would have just died, I ain't had shit to show for it. So I'm like, man, I gotta make something of myself, like. Like, if it is, somebody got to know me. Like, if I, I was just died just then, I would just be another nigga who died. Like, nobody know who this nigga is. Just push that mic right there because it's in your face. Just push that shit right out of the way. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push that way. So, that, so getting shot just kind of like made you, gave you a new purpose for yeah, life. Like right. gave me a, yeah, a new purpose for life. Exactly. You look on now, Twitter, you like, I ain't trending. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I went talking about nothing. I got shot, bro. That was the point. I was like, man, I got to be something. Like, mm-hmm. that what made me like, man, I got to be something. Like, whatever I do, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I got to be something. Now, it's always hard to make a decision on signing, right, to an artist, to a label. So, Schooly, let's start with you for the guys. Um, how did you guys decide to actually sign that deal? Where were you? What was that process like? What did you think? Um, it, it actually was um, an after each other process. I've been with Chang for a while. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, uh, sleeping, well, hot, I mean, World came first after me, mm-hmm. and Sleeping and Hot came together. Cause you have been with him for a while, so why it, it take it took until now? It's just waiting for the label situation to happen. Yeah, I would I would say that. Um, re- really waiting for the right situation, the right time. Mm-hmm. I guess. You were in Atlanta though, shit. so other people had to try to sign you. I, I think I saw you got like eight million streams already on, yeah, yeah. on Spotify or some shit. Yeah. So other people had to try to be reaching out to you. Yeah, all the time. You know, I'm I'm comfortable where I'm at. Where I'm at though. You never thought about jumping? Like, you know what? It's taking too long. I gotta go. Or you just said, you know what, I'm going to trust in Chance because I know what he is. Yeah, that's I wouldn't have got with him if I ain't trust him. I, you know, I am I feel obligated to show him what I got. Mm-hmm. So I'm here to, to show that. Really. Do, you, do you get paid for uh, Metro Boomin' and, and London's tags? You know that's that's him saying that. What he saying? Who? Metro Boomin' wants some more? No, that no, is cool. No, no, and and, and we got London on I'm the track? I'm saying we got London on the track and... <laughs> Done deal on the track. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you didn't do Metro Boomer? No, nah, I ain't doing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's one of my my great close friends, though. That's my man. You don't get paid for that, though. The the game. You get some beats. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I'm supposed to, you know. But I don't be tripping on that. I'm supposed to be though. Change. I'm supposed to be. You get nervous having artists because I mean you've been through a situation where you were signed to an artist and mm-hmm. you wanted to leave. Do you ever get nervous that like I got to go over an extra because of that situation? Not over an, an extra. I just try to do things that weren't done when I was in their position, which was just show them more, look, edu- educate more. Not that the situation that I was in didn't do that because I learned from just being around. I'm very observant. But mm-hmm. with them, uh, they got full creative control. So with them, I don't have any say-so in their studio activities because all they needed to be around me was work ethic, and they have that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When Sleep says he records 8 to 10 songs a day, it's, it's almost fascinating. 
because we can't keep up. The man had a hundred songs. Soon as I signed, soon as I signed the man, and like I want to say almost two months, he had a hundred songs. It was really like fascinating, you know what I mean? And so, um, I'm not concerned. They have full creative control. They can kind of you know do what they want. It's just important for me, like I say, to change somebody's life. Like I say, that'll add quality. It really helps both sides. You know what I'm saying? I get. To, I told them, like, when they start getting hot and I ain't got nothing going on, I'm going to crank my tour bus up because I own one of them. I'm going to follow them around tour, mm -hmm. do one or two songs, and, and just get on their nerves. And You know what I mean? And that's just how it's going to be. But right now, it's about the discovery. I know I got superstars with me. It's like these are, like, the four hottest people from Atlanta. And then, you know, Atlanta been carrying the torch for at least two decades now as far as just being music and, and being on top with the rap scene. So I know deep down in my heart that f one of these four, if not all of them, is the new guy from the city. So why I'm trying to figure out why school ain't pop off, because even Pitchfork said that school, you changed the way Atlanta rapped. Like, God damn. That's a big, that's a, that's a big uh, statement from them. What's your thoughts on that? <clears throat> I think I may be way too humble <laughs> for Atlanta. Um, but I love Atlanta. Um, I I don't know. I don't say a lot. I don't speak on a lot of things that I be post. I post to. Uh, I'm afraid of rejection. If you could re believe that, so like I just be, I be trying to just. I don't make so many mistakes. I be trying to just accomplish something, and I be grateful like for pop off what it's doing right now. Like I'm grateful that people just even giving me a listen again. You know what I'm saying? I just been through so much. I just be cool. What do you think, James? Your CEO mind. Why why you think it didn't it hasn't happened for him yet? I mean, it took a long time for it to happen for me too. So that's I think why we grew so close, man. It's always this feeling of somebody not wanting you to succeed, somebody close to you. It's, I don't know about him, but when he says fear of rejection and just fear of um you know, all the things that he's going through inside his head, I went through it too, just knowing you know, and with me, I ain't know if it was the name change or what, but I just knew I had what it took. And so he reminds me so much of me because when I did, used to get on skate about coming to the studio or something like that. When he came, he would kill something so effortlessly. I would be like, I wonder, is this guy doing this on purpose? Because he never shows emotion. He's always the same way. He's just, he's never too high, geeked, high or happy. He's never too sad. He's just always in the middle. So... Um, I, I used to tell people, like other people, I'd be like, bro, when the man do a song, it be out of here. When the man get on my song, he go crazy, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I don't, and, 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 and he sits around like, it's not, like he know his time coming. I don't really know how to explain how he move. Like, it's, it's not really that urgent. He just kind of be like kicking it and stuff. But then as soon as he opens his, opens his mouth, you just know this is a superstar, like Shorty got it. So I just know it's gonna connect. It's about connecting the dots with the actual um, fans, not the not our peers. The peers, are soup. they already know who school is. They acknowledge him every time we go somewhere. It's about making the fans know, you know, what they missing out on. Now, two change. You talk about changing lives. So, how has life changed, world? Starting with you, how has life changed already with this uh, project out, being on the cover, rolling out, everybody seeing well, it that? it changed. It changed a lot for me because I come from nothing. Like where I'm from in Atlanta, like nobody, there's no celebrities where I'm from. So, everything changed about me: money, relationships, family. Like everything's different. When you say relationships and family, what does that mean? Because sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's good and it's got bad because, it like you know, this rap shit. So, you know, my old lady be tripping a, a lot. But <laughs> 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 before, I go on, before I go on, I want to say I, I'm totally honored to be here because I know a lot of niggas that drop everybody in this room just sitting in this seat I'm in. So I want to thank y'all. Yeah, everybody that yeah, yeah, cheap now. Yeah, right. A breakfast club in nah, get somebody got? Y'all big. Yeah, everybody got in this room? Y'all big. You scared to sit by you, Charlamagne? For what? I'm just saying, like, for real, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just honored to be here. You probably was <laughs> because what's in that box bro, over there, but don't worry about it. <laughs> but I'm honored to be here. Envy, mm -hmm. you did. What, what's the No Child Left Behind initiative? What's that? Well, the No Child Left Behind started, like, it started with me as a, a person like mm -hmm. I'm a person that raised on morals and principles and like the kids in my community ain't got nothing to look up to it's a federal penitentiary right by my hood like bodies drop like a kid where I'm from get shot every year where I'm from so like w what I was just saying about it's no celebrities no nothing no athletes where I'm from so I just want to get a kid something to look up to and it started as an idea you feel me what, what mm -hmm. instilled that in you though because I mean you know growing up in well Atlanta, I wasn't left behind like okay. my father didn't leave me behind my mother didn't leave me behind 
So that's why I'm like, no child up behind. And I don't, I got my kids with me every day. I got custody on my sons. Mm-hmm. So, you know. So when you say you're a community activist, what is, what is that? Is that like, like, you know, you, you go out and you. I uplift the community. I book really like. Giveaways and all that. All like, that we, do, we do, every yeah. holiday we do shit. Like for, but why I say about that, I want to just start a no fun, no profit organization. Like it's just gonna build up to it. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just me starting as a person. Like this is what I want to do for my community. Something mm-hmm. you're passionate about. Does your music yeah, reflect I'm that? I'm very, yeah. I deliver that message in my music. That's the, show. that's the crazy thing about Atlanta, right? Like growing up, Atlanta had that, like the Goody Mob, mm-hmm. the, yeah. the, uh, Outcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they had reflections of those brothers that were the community activists. A social, I say, socially conscious more so. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. All right, we were talking about lives changing, mm-hmm. so. Sleep, talk about it. Shit. So you like did a bid, right? Yeah, hey, yeah. How long? About, I'd say about two years. Two years? Okay. Yeah, hey, yeah, but that shit changed my life tremendously, you feel me? Like, I came from from the block. I ain't gonna say I just came from the block, but but the way I came, I left how early, you feel me? So I left when I was 14, so I would bounce around type, you feel me? But the way I would bounce around, I would have my own, and I'd have... I have I always have a group with me like my folks, mm-hmm. so it's like I'm slit raising, I'm slit raising niggas my age type shit mm-hmm. down there all my life. You feel me? So couple on died off, couple on gone. So when when bro took me up out of that, it just took all them up out of it. It just changed everything. It changed them. It changed me. Mm-hmm. Right. That's my family. You feel me? My family, my family. But it helped. It helped the people I needed it to help. I heard you got a tattoo on your face that really means something, a, a rose. All of them mean something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that for my little sister, she did too. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of folk dead, man, but I got the real one. I don't did a lot of real shit anywhere. You feel me? I got the rose. I got TFOU. I mean, this shit for us. Anything we do, this shit for us. Like, the true count, this shit for us. Mm-hmm. Everything for us. Change, what, what did you learn from your time with DTP that you are applying to the whole true situation? Uh, you know, I, man, you know, I ain't trying to get no clickbait, man. I'm just, just really just giving these these boys a chance and some opportunities. Not to say I didn't get one there, but just giving them a chance, some looks. You know what I'm saying? Just taking them around, getting them some game. You know, like I don't even want to talk about DTP. That's it's so out of my, it's so out like out of my picture right now. It's just about what I'm doing today. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody know me, like. I ain't running out of ideas no time soon. I ain't running out of work ethic or energy. So I could be doing a lot of this stuff for myself. I've been here numerous times with you guys. It was important that I brought mm-hmm. brought them in front of y'all. I know Charlemagne could be tough. I know all that. But, like, this whole week, you know what I'm saying, we kind of worked up to this because it's been, like, me just trying to tell them, you know, talk. It's Like I said, I don't have to do nothing in the studio. But, like, when we come do interviews, I might say talk in the mic. I might say, you know, just different things. Introduce, let the people know who you are. But it's very small things that hopefully they can take with them when I'm not around. So that's why, you know, I came up in here. I'm not really worried about my last situation. Mm-hmm. I just know um, I, I'm sure I know they straight. You know, so I know they straight because I made sure they were straight. I put some in their pocket. I put some on them. I made sure they move with me. You know what I'm saying? So I try not to let them have to worry about the block and going back to the block and doing some of the things they used to do. You know what I mean? Um, Hot is dealing with uh, tons of cases that he had prior to getting with them. One of those cases are like the past trying to, you know, catch up to you while you trying to do something, you know, right. So mm-hmm. we dealing with we dealing with some stuff that, that was before I even got in the picture, you know what I mean? So I'm not worried about my previous um, engagements or relationships. It's about what I'm doing right now, and I'm shaking up the industry right now because anytime I, I, I introduce these boys to somebody, they say, I already know what you got going on. I already know who this is, so I feel like it's working. Now, I just ask because in a lot of ways you were introduced to a lot of people through – you know, I definitely was. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. I, I'm feeling salty about it, but like, that's not the narrative. Feel like this. It's time for this. I, I put out five, six solo albums. I got two group albums. I got a Grammy. I got a lot of stuff going on. What haven't I done? Made it a temp at having a successful label. Like what I ain't done is a put like what I, I sit up and think what have I not done? Mm-hmm. I ain't made the cover of Rolling Stones. I ain't got a verse with Jay Z. I ain't put nobody on. Right. You gotta put somebody. You can't be talking about you boss ball. You ain't put nobody on. This man, twenty years old, right here. Y'all ain't putting nobody on. I'm seeing y'all move, and a lot of these folks, they name, 
bigger than they, they wallet. They ain't having no paper for real. Like, for real. These niggas ain't having no paper. That shit cap. Like, I'm, I know it. I'm just letting them, but I, I'm moving how I move. You know but what I'm saying? I would, I would say one thing. I, I, I would just, I would say I respect you a lot. A lot of people only see the rap side, but, you know, when I look at you and I look at your life and I look at how, you know, you said your goal for the next two years is to make sure you put an artist on. I salute that. What you do for the for the basketball league that you own a team in and how you trying to put people in your city on it and giving them a spot outside of just playing in the NBA and giving them something else to do. I respect that. The fact that uh, what you do in real estate, a lot of people don't know. And the fact that you put a lot of the stuff online to show people that it can be done with the amount of money and what you do. And it's, of course, the, the give backs that you do. A lot of people don't see that side of 2 chains, and they talk about everything else, but they don't show that. And that's one thing I would say I always respected about chains. And, and then, of course, the second thing, the family. Mm-hmm. I love to see you with your kids and your wife and, 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 and teaching people how to be good fathers. We don't see that. We didn't. We weren't raised in that era. We were raised in the era where you hid your wife, you hid your girl, you hid your kids because you had to be single to promote for a label. And the fact that I see that with you and you teaching these young men, I just want to say I salute you because I think that's pretty dope. Bro. Thank you, man. My wife beautiful. My kids are beautiful. So I couldn't hide that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'd be want, you know, that's a reflection of you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So you'd be like, oh, okay, he got something going on you know what I mean so I never tried to keep that narrative like even when a girl like if a girl is interested in me I have to be like now you know excuse me but like look at me I'm having paper I'm having good credit <laughs> you know somebody thought I was five before you thought I was five <laughs> you know what I'm saying like before you thought I was had you know handsome and stuff you know somebody else might have thought the same thing, and that's how I move. But you know, that's kind of like what these boys, they got their own lives going on. I'm not yeah. even here to do that. That's an example thing we said. Some it, it, people got an ugly wife and ugly kids, you ain't gonna see them. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're gonna have that burner page. <laughs> let's get, you ain't gonna let's see get into them. a joint off the album, James. What you wanna uh, hear? Damn. Oh man. Let's, I like Brick to the Face. I, I like, like Pop uh, Off. The first joint. It's hard. Uh, I like Shootout. Uh, Shootout's dope. Uh, shoot it out. Okay, okay, we're gonna have to. Uh, I fuck with Georgia too. I fuck with Georgia too. I like Georgia Spin too. Spin and shoot it out, man. Let's do what, it. What, what do you want to hear? <laughs> yeah, they should do shoot it out. They want to do out? shoot it out. Yeah, Let's like do it. Let's do it to the face too, though. Man. Man. Pop off. Do that brick. What you do with two? It's a group. I love right, right, shoot out two. and pop it off. Shoot up. Or y'all just gonna fuck fuck my uh, brick to the man, face. Do that brick, right. Evie. All right. <laughs> Let's get into it, and we appreciate you guys for joining us, man. Look forward. Wait, wait, hold on. When is that Family Feud airing? Oh man! Because I want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> we can't tell y'all the results, but we went to Family Feud. Y'all man. better have one, man. Yeah. Cause I'm... <laughs> huh? Who did y'all verse? We played against Big uh, Boy, and Big his Boy, and his family. Did y'all smoke out the Family Feud studio? <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> y'all smell us in here now. That's like uh, what 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 we say. It's only weed, bro. We ain't doing. <laughs> By the way, uh, Angela, thank you for uh, inviting us to your birthday party. I went yeah, I had a good time with y'all. Y'all was in there and light up a blunt. I'm going to light it here. Where's the digger yeah, smoking weed? Yeah, by the way, you almost got the party yeah, shut down. I don't know if I'm invited back next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what's that smell? It was like, that's two chain yeah. section yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. that's what they need to understand, too. They throw my, look, when they do shit, my name going to come up first. You wasn't there? I got in there late. When I got in there late and tried to even pull mine out, they was just freeze. You know, like, I'm like, what the fuck But I made sure everybody, y'all had a lane. You guys got to bow. Yeah, they had fun. And I appreciate y'all for coming out and showing support at the birthday party. They did come up to me and say, who was in here smoking? And I was like, they I, knew. I said, I don't know. <laughs> Tony like, Gang, like two chains <laughs> and his crew. Envy I mean, was like, right. two chains. I didn't say that. 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 Envy ratted on. I didn't say that, man. Come on. In that section, look for the smoke. Look over there. Look for the smoke. It's the Breakfast Club. It's two chains in the true camp, y'all. Yeah.